What is going on guys, Judo Sloth here and welcome to today's Clash of Clans video, the Bow Witch at Town Hall 12. It still works but you do have to select your bases relatively carefully, a couple of key points that you need to look at, so that is what this video is going to break down. Now the first base here has a couple of things that should automatically jump out to you and that is single target. Target Inferno Towers. Now when would you see single target? When would you not see them? Primarily you will see single target Infernos in Legends League, but you will not see them as much in War. What is the reason for that? If anybody knows, let me know down in the comments. I will reveal it towards the end of the video as well, but if you know why single target infernos are more common in Legends than in War, drop me a comment right now. However, let's get into this one. If you see single target infernos in War, you should automatically be thinking, should I use bats? Should I use witches? Can I use them? Therefore, you want to look at where the splash is. Now, when you look at this base, the thing which should immediately point out to you is that there is no splash up to the top of the base here, other than the town hall. So we can easily get the bats in that area. Could have meant that the drag bat potentially was a good idea. However, we go for the bow witch in this one. We've got two wizard towers across to the left, a multi and a wizard down to the bottom, and then wizard towers up to the top. However, notice that the wizard towers as well are in a position where one freeze spell could freeze both wizard towers. So that's kind of a base design flaw. In fact, looking at this area, you could freeze all all four buildings here so definitely a base design flaw so we don't necessarily have to get to that splash damage area we could use the bats through that so where would we come in now the town hall definitely wants to be your main target your bats will not take that out so you've got to get into that however we have to make sure that we get this multi-target inferno as well so ideally if we draw a line from the town hall this is the area somewhere down here where the wall wrecker has to be coming in. Otherwise, we would not open up the compartment to the multi-target inferno. We couldn't reach it from the outside. However, both of the wizard towers to the left, we can. So what Firebird decides to do here is your traditional bow witch. And that is what I am going to focus this video on. Now, what I mean by the traditional bow witch is where you sweep from one side of the base to the other and you use your troops to funnel. So we have some troops coming around the left side, some troops coming around the right and then your main pack into the center. He uses a couple of golems here initially to tank and making sure that the heroes come with the wall wrecker to the town hall. So let's start the attack here. We'll continue to break it down as we move through. And if you're new here to the channel, you want to see daily Clash of Clans videos, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So a good spread here with the bowlers and witches. The golems are tanking initially here. Just got to take note of the single target inferno and what you do not want to do is rush. So the jump spell is in situ, as is the rage spell, but notice how it is inside the base here. It's already there for when the wall wrecker gets through. What you do not want to do is use it on the outside of the base. As tempting as that would be, it can often allow the bowlers to bounce into the base here, and then your funnel is not created, and all of your troops walk around the outside. So don't use the rage spell too early, guys. The jump spell provides access to that town hall, although if you are using the golems, you might actually be able to get the wall wrecker through there. So I would probably recommend holding on to that jump spell. You don't have to use it straight away, but you do have to consider where your troops might go if you don't use the jump spell. So do take note of that. Pre-poisons the clan castle troops, and not a lot of people do that nowadays, but if you know what's in there, you can put the poison down, so as soon as them clan castle troops come out, then you can take that area. Now let's pause again and think about what we said at the start of the video in terms of the bats and in terms of the splash. So we 
have this little group coming around the left hand side they've have successfully taken out the two uh, wizard towers. That's the beauty of the bowlers and witches. The witches tend to spawn the skeletons which protect the bowlers and you can take that area. We've taken all of the splash down to the south. There's just these wizard towers and the town hall look. Imagine if I had of left it an extra second before I paused it. Town Hall would have been gone, but that's exactly my point. When the Town Hall is gone, the bats can safely come in. In fact, how many spied it? How many spied it? There's actually already bat spells coming in. Look at how crazy that looks. So bat spells coming in from the left hand side to try and flush through this dangerous area first. Now we could have put them in directly on top of the wizard towers with the freeze spells, take that out. However, if we can flush through this top area, there's lots of cannons in this area, look. That means the bats will be incredibly effective against that, and it will protect the bowlers and witches even better. So, arguably, you could have came in from left or right. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what side you would come in from. But I do think that Firebird does a good job here, because getting the cannons down early on with the bats means that the ground-based troops are protected, and potentially they wouldn't have been not to mention obviously we know that as the bats come down to this area check that out all of the buildings get frozen maybe a touch too early on the freeze there the bats are going to go down to the wizard tower however if you are able to freeze the buildings and take out the ones that are threatening your ground-based troops with the bats Obviously, that means you've got more troops to finish off as well. And in the end here, we have the Queen's ability swagged pretty much. We've got lots of troops coming around and an all-around nice three-star. So, why would you see more single-target Infernos in Legends League than you would in War? Well, the plain and simple answer is that in War, you can plan your attack. Now, single target infernos, really, if you come up against them, you should be wrecking that base. Bats, witches, there's so many ways to swarm the base, so they're just not that effective. However, a queen charge is the most effective use of a kill squad of an initial entry so that is where in legends league you can't change your attack you're stuck that's where now you might see more single target infernos in order to try and defend against the queen charge because you can't change your army how many knew that how many of you guys knew that haven't turned off the lower third so it's still down there feel free to subscribe if you haven't already but let's move into the next attack where again we have a single target inferno at the top a single target inferno down to the bottom but we have the multi to the right and the town hall to the left firebird massive shout out my man getting the six pack here and i think it was quite nice because we don't see a lot of the bow witch style attacks anymore in the game so that's why i wanted to feature this in this video whilst we had the opportunity now, Firebird decides to come into the town hall here. What he could have done, and I think he made the right choice here, I'll explain why in a second, but he could have came over from this angle into that multi-inferno first, get that down, and the wrecker would continue to come through this angle. Then he could have used the bats exactly the same over the top of the base. However, one thing you have to do with the bow witch is get the funneling correct. So again, classic bow witch deployment here coming right across this side. So we have a pack coming around the bottom, pack coming around the top, but the main force comes into the center. Now, when you get your troops into the center, the main thing which can cause a bow witch to fail is when your troops start going everywhere. You've got some coming to the left, some coming forward, some coming to the right. So that is what you want to avoid. Think about what areas you're opening, opening up with a jump spell, but also think about the base design itself. Now what this single target inferno in this little pocket by itself provides is a natural funnel here look so that we know the bowlers and witches coming through the center will condense through the center of the base. Then we can pull the bats in from the top to take out these defenses and ensure that the bow witch continues on that path. They're all fighting together in the center. You don't want them to split. So I think that's why Firebird came in from the top left of the base instead of at the bottom. So as we normally do, let's start the replay. We will continue to pause and ensure that 
all of the educational points are put through. Now with the Bull Witch, do not rush with the bowler deployment because the bowlers are what you're trying to get into the center here. We've got good spread on witches look right the way across this side to self funnel. You do want to do that with the bowlers as well. However, you do want to deploy them a little bit heavier into this area. So you can see we start as the wall wrecker punches through with the queen, with the king and with the grand warden. And from there, we have that nice little split around the top and the bottom and we get into the town hall. So a rage spell is very much needed there. Grand Warden's ability should be used as well and the jump spell here accesses the Eagle Artillery and up to the top. Now, could have made an adjustment here because the bats up to this single target inferno they take that down and they're going to power down this way look so in my opinion firebird could have put the jump spell here in order to not open up the eagle artillery component that would have meant that all of the bowlers and witches come down here and it kept the bats through this area because the eagle artillery would have went down fast and then we'd have got to that back area. Yes, we do have the multi and the wizard tower to contend with. So potentially getting over to that would mean that we could take that down before the bats get there. But due to the deployment of the bats relatively early on, they're going to get there before any troops in the center would have tanked that area anyway. So in my opinion, that jump spell could have been adjusted. Funnel could have been slightly better, but hopefully you guys get the idea. In an ideal world, you want the bats to survive you don't want them to go down so that is where the freeze spells can be effective unlike the first attack the second one here the multi and the wizard tower were out of range so two freeze spells had to be used and unfortunately due to the pathing of the bats didn't get the multi down with the bats. It shredded them, but they took out enough of the base to protect the bowlers and witches, and with only one multi inferno, the base goes down relatively comfortably. Now, I know that this one isn't a maxed out base. However, I'm relatively confident that with the amount of troops left over, that this would have been a three star anyways. And again, I just wanted to take the opportunity whilst we had these couple of bow witch style replays to bring you that as a video but the drag bat attack is another variation you can use when you have single target infernos and I did a video on that recently I'm going to link it here so that you guys can see that breakdown but that wraps it up for this one I hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like if you did and until next time peace out